So you need to find a way to save your academic year for mathematics. You've come to the right place. Today I will be doing a countdown of my top 10 tips on how to improve and become better at mathematics. In this video I will be sharing some interesting tips. So stick around for my top 3 tips on how to become better at mathematics. Starting off with tip number 10 is not making excuses. Now we all know it is always easier to shift the blame to everybody else but yourself. But we do know and we do have to ask ourselves the question, are you trying the best that you can do? Are you putting in all the effort that you can do? And are you applying everything that has been taught to you? If that's not the case, before you can blame the environment, the teacher, anything else for that matter, you need to look into the mirror and ask yourself, are you doing the best that you can do? Tip number nine, do and master the previous grade's work. We all know in mathematics, all the topics link up with one another and you need a good solid foundation to improve your marks at your current grade. So if you know that your marks were not that good in the previous term or grade, you have to go back to that previous grade and try to master that work and study that work before you can try and improve your current grade because that is what is most likely holding you back because you need that solid foundation from the previous grade to improve your current mark. Coming in at tip number eight, aiming to understand everything. Now, like I previously mentioned in tip number nine, if you do not know and master all of the work, the work that you do not know is going to stack up and build and haunt you as you go to the next grade. You need to make sure that you try and understand about 80 to 90 percent of the work so that that gap is not that big. Because if you do not understand the work that you're currently doing, that is going to hinder you in the next grade and bring that mark from a 60 to a 50 to a 40. And you don't want that. Coming in at tip number seven, asking stupid questions in class. Unfortunately, you're going to have to do it because as you know, if there's a question that you don't know, most likely 80% of the class has that same question. You need to make sure that you are staying focused in the lesson and whenever there is something that the teacher comes across that you don't understand or that doesn't make sense to you, you have to lift up your hand and be courageous and ask that stupid question. It's better to be dumb for that five seconds than to be dumb or not know the work for the entire term. Coming in at tip number six, the resources. You are living in a 21st century where you have the most abundance of resources of all time. You have AI, ChatGPT, you have Symbolab, you have GeoGebra, you have many online resources to use to assist you with mathematics. Then you have textbooks on the internet, you have many different varieties of textbooks on the same topic. You have vast variety of YouTube videos. If you don't understand one specific person, you can go on to the next person because on YouTube they cover one topic many different times by many different channels. And also, you can go onto the internet and get past papers. If I can let you in on a little bit of a secret, is that 80% of the time when you do write a test, it is taken from different past papers and put together to create a new type of question paper for you. The only time when it's completely new is when it is an external government set paper. Otherwise, if your teacher is setting it, I can bet that 90% of that paper is going to be resourced from different previous question papers. So make sure you build up a good file of all the past papers for mathematics for your grade and you will pick up a pattern that are specific type of questions that are always asked in question papers. So they all have the same type of sequence and there has to be specific topics always in specific paper. Coming in at tip number five, note taking. Now, I am not just talking about taking notes from the board onto your book. No, no, no. 
I am talking about specifically tailoring your notes to yourself. There are many times when you've done your homework and you've gotten a question wrong and all you do is you write the correct answer from the board onto your book. What you need to do, you need to analyze where you went wrong. Make sure that you highlight that, you indicate exactly what you didn't understand. And that mistake, you have to highlight that for yourself and to make sure that you don't repeat that in your exam, your test. You also need to make sure that when you are taking notes, you are adding in extra bits of information that the teacher is talking about while writing notes on the board. As a teacher, we cannot fill the board with everything that is important. We highlight the most important things, but there are always little bits here and there that you have to add in between the notes. You need to make sure that you are highlighting these points because they are critical to understanding why certain things are done in mathematics. Number four, it's quite obvious, you need to practice. Many of us say that, oh, I'm not good at maths, but if I ask you, how many hours do you put in a day for mathematics? 30 minutes, one hour. If you even do extra work, you need to make sure that you're practicing daily at least two hours with mathematics. Like I said, there are many resources to use on the internet. You can use the past papers, practice. You can ask the AI to make up question papers for you. There are many things that you can do to practice. You can even write a weekly test for yourself on a Saturday, asking your teacher for a specific topic test that you can write to see how good or if you are improving at that specific topic. Then, when you see that you only got 60%, 70%, you know, like I said, that still is not good enough. That's 30% you don't know. You need to make sure that you master everything leading up to your test. My top three tips. Tip number three, your study technique. Now, there are many, many vast variety of study techniques and learning techniques on the internet. You need to make sure that you explore all of them and see which one fits you the best. One I would like to highlight is the Feynman technique. You would study the concept, you would then teach it to someone and have them ask questions. And you need to test them to see that they fully understand what you're trying to teach them. And then you go back and review what are the concepts that they must out on, that you forgot to implement. And also questions that they had for you that you couldn't answer. You go back to your content and you fill in those gaps and you try to teach it again up until you can relay that information to someone and they get 100%. Coming in at tip number two, forming a study group. It is important in high school to surround yourself with those that have a similar goal as yourself. You need to get those around you to lift themselves. And if they don't want to elevate themselves with you, you need to find a different group, different bunch of peers and form a study group. In the study group, about one or two of your peers or your students, you don't even have to be close friends. As long as you're forming this understanding that when there's something in class that you must, they can share that notes with you. And if there's something they must, you can share it to them. Then if the teacher is not always available for questions, you can ask them and they can ask you. That way you are also studying in that group by teaching someone else and them teaching you. You can also form a WhatsApp group where you can discuss the answers, talk about the topic that was, that was taught in the class and generally just have discussions around the overall lesson about specific things that you must share past papers and sometimes you can discuss because you might not know why the memo of a specific past paper has a specific answer but your friend might know or you might know to help your friend. It is important that in order for you to succeed, you need to lift those around you and they need to lift you. 
So you need to create a winning environment around yourself. My number one tip, asking for the ATP. You might be wondering, what is the ATP? The ATP is the annual teaching plan. This is the guideline to what the teachers must, not maybe, must teach. It is all the topics, with all the objectives, with all the prerequisite knowledge that you need to understand that topic. So you can have a look at that and exactly see all the objectives that needs to be reached within two weeks, the topics that needs to be covered, and then go over that. You can even go as far as going ahead of the class and seeing which topics are going to be taught. Because like I said, it is not a choice what must be taught. That has to be taught in class. So take the ATP, use it as a guideline to see which topics are covered in this term. Then you can see exactly which topics or what objectives you didn't reach because it will specify exactly what you need to be able to do. And you can check that for yourself and compare what you can do with what the objectives of the ATP was and if you reached that, yes or no. You can go topic by topic and that will assist you to get the previous grades ATP and catch up all the foundation knowledge that you must. I hope this video will help you to reach your goals and make that academic comeback. Thank you for watching.